Hey everybody, John Costigan, I'm back. This technique is called Good Question, Why Did You Ask? Now I know I did something else before that referenced Good Question, Why Did You Ask? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill down into this technique. Um, it's funny, I was, um, it's kind of, kind of a cool story. I was flying to Nova Scotia. I've only been there one time. It's not too often you get a chance to go to Nova Scotia. Actually, I, um, actually, I think Sidney Crosby, the famous hockey player, is from Nova Scotia. So anyway, I was flying to Nova Scotia, and I'm talking to a gentleman. I wasn't sure who this person was, and we were just striking up a conversation on the airplane. And this gentleman taps me on the shoulder in the back, and I kind of look back, and he goes, hey, um, are you John Costigan? And I said, um, and he kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, uh, uh, well, hey, why, why do you ask? And I kind of laughed. He goes, oh, I know it's you now. And I go, why? He's like, I got your CDs, man. That's one of those things you say, like, don't ever answer a question. I'm like, oh, man, well, I don't want to be the guy who doesn't ever answer a question, right? And, you know, it's not, it's not like, hey, where's the bathroom? Good question. Why did you ask? I mean, dude, you got to go, you got to go, right? I mean, I'm not that anal about it. But at the end of the day, it is kind of funny to know that even this good question, why did you ask? I think for me as a salesperson, I was so bad at always just giving up answers. And when you gave up an answer, you gave up your leverage. And leverage is so important in the sales process. So um, I think I was always kind of good question, why did you ask before I revealed my cards, so to speak. But you got to make sure there's a balance with it. So you're just not saying it all the time because it can be irritating. It is kind of funny to all have, I just had a client of mine in Phoenix called and said, hey, John, are you available to come out and work with our folks out here in Phoenix, Arizona? And he was giving me the dates. And, and so I was about, he goes, and by the way, don't do the whole good question thing. I know it's coming, so let me just kind of answer all this stuff before he's kind of going into that good question mode. And I kind of laughed. I'm like, I'm like, gosh, am I that bunch of a pain in the butt? He goes, no, but you do. You know when he, he kind of he joked, he goes, when you talk to John Costigan, you know he's going to ask you questions and he's going to try to uncover what's going on. He goes, so there's a part of me going, just, just make sure you have your ducks in your row when you go talk to him. Now, again, this is a gentleman I've known for quite a while, so they kind of know what's going on with the story. So I don't want to be irritating. There's a flow there, right? So as you're watching this, I don't want, I don't want to irritate people. I thought it was kind of comical that people go, I know you're going to ask the question, so here, let me just fill in the blanks for you, which is really pretty cool that they're almost kind of qualifying the opportunity for you without you not even doing the work, right? But at the end of the day, when I say good question, why'd you ask? Let's look at an example of price. Let's pretend somebody says, is this your best price? What I will tell you, and that's a very common objection, right? Um, or it's a common question, I should say. Most reps, I can tell you, I, really, I, I, you know, when I'm doing training classes, I'll say, raise your hand if you say something like, yes, it is, or raise your hand if it's no. And now role play, it's, it's almost it's almost 100%. They all go, well, yeah, it is. Uh, it, that, that I gave you my best price. Or they go, well, hey, where do we need to be? And to me, that's like saying, no, it's not, right? So either way, you're answering the question and giving up leverage. So I've always said to people, especially on the pricing one, if anybody ever says that, hey, is that your best price? I go, well, hey, you must have brought that up for a reason. Can I ask you, you know, why do you ask? And what's really neat about the exercise we do in our classes is that I'll go to the whiteboard and I'll ask the audience, so tell me why you think they're asking. And what's really cool, I think a lot of you looking at this, you're probably going to say, well, they want a better price. But there's reason behind that. What about this? Maybe they don't have enough budget. Number two, uh, maybe this is how they're measured. They get measured on how much they save off the first price in. Number three, maybe habitually. I work with a lot of clients where they probably discount much more aggressively towards the end of a quarter. So maybe they're asking for that reason. Number four, maybe they just want a deal. Hey, a lot of us, we all want to get a deal, right? So it'd be kind of cool. You know, whenever you get a deal, you tell your friends, like, oh, I got a great deal. Like if you bought a car or something, right? So we all want to, or we bought something because it was on sale, right? That's like, that's like getting a deal. So you'll realize there's a lot of different reasons why somebody would ask you, correct? And when I write all these up on the board, what's funny is the audience is looking at this and like, there's like 18 different reasons. So then what I'll do is I'll point to the audience and say, Here, let's role play. You got the easiest role play possible. All I want you to do is be able to say, good question, why'd you ask? Ready? Here I go. You play the rep, I'll play um, the customer. Ready? Hey, um, so uh, maybe I'm calling on Mary in the audience. Go, hey Mary, I got your pricing right here. Uh, looks pretty good, but let me ask you, is this your best price? And I point, and then you know this young lady, Mary, will say, uh, good question, why'd you ask? And then I'll look at the board, and I'll, and I'll point to somebody else in the audience and go, point to one of these answers. Give me the number. I'm like, oh, number five. And here's one I didn't bring up, number five. We're using you to get a better deal from somebody else. Now, they're not going to say that, right? 
but I'll put it into business terms. I'll go, well, you know, you know, we already have a vendor in here, and I know you guys have been dying to get in, so you're gonna have to sharpen up your pencil. You know, to me, that just said, I'm using your information, right? But at the end of the day, once you find that out, now let's pretend the guy, the gentleman says, in this case, the role play is, hey, I'm using your information to get a better deal, but they say it in the business term, right? Well, John, you know that there's a lot of companies in here, and we just wanna know if this is your best price. I would then say, I would now reply back and say, okay, well, let me ask you a question. Um, uh, where do we rank right now in your, in, in your choices? And you said three, if we were all the same, I mean, we'd be, we'd be number not one, two, or three. Because my concern is you're just basing this all on price. Can you walk me through that? Let me stop, out of role play, okay? All, the only point I want you to really get from this one video is this. When someone says, asks you a question, um, and saying good question, why'd you ask? Don't do it all the time, but especially on price you can do it. But you might have a variety of different things. Hey, guy, can you guys deliver in two weeks? It's funny, sometimes you'll hear something like, hey, can you do this in two weeks? You go, yeah, absolutely. As opposed to going, well, let me ask you, things are kind of crazy around here, why? And they might go, oh, because I have a deadline date of. See, this is a great technique of getting them to continue to open up so you can understand their business and what's motivating them. And you really, once you find that out, then you have a much better chance of now responding back. And again, to kind of put a wrap around this whole thing, you're not losing your leverage. So as long as you can hold on to your leverage, as long as possible till you finally now give the answer, it's much better for you because now your answer could be specific to why they asked instead of superficial 30,000 feet. Is that your best price? And then we just go yes or no and then, then we're stuck. Okay? So, good selling. Just remember, don't lose your leverage. Hey everybody, John Costigan here. The toughest part to any sale is getting in the door, right? Tell you what, click on the URL below this video or go to costigantraining.com slash free week. Take the first step of solving this huge problem of getting in the door. It's five days, five clips, less than five minutes. Click on the link. We'll see you in a few seconds.